Hey everybody, during this expedition NA-155, we're using unmanned surface vessel Drix, hybrid remotely operated vehicle Mesobot, and the deep autonomous profiler to investigate the biodiversity of the geologist's seamounts across the water column from the base of the seamount all the way through the midwater, and all while mapping the region in detail never before seen. This multi-vehicle mission is made possible in large part through a series of upgrades to Drix, allowing for over-the-horizon communication communication away from Nautilus. It has a new multi-beam suited for deeper waters and more robust communication with autonomous vehicles such as Mesobot and the Deep Autonomous Profiler. These new capabilities enable the team to use Drix to redirect Mesobot to areas of interest in a process called verified direct sampling, where Drix observes something of interest and is able to task Mesobot to investigate. Here to explain a little bit further is Larry Mayer, who's leading the Drix team. I'm Larry Mayer. I'm the director of the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire. But we have a wonderful team of engineers who actually do all the hard work and the development. Drix has been a remarkable tool that's been evolving over the last couple of years. We only really started in earnest May of 2022 when we took delivery and had it installed on the Nautilus. Lots of learning curves, learning about how to launch and recover it, learning what it could do and what it couldn't do. But the thing we were most excited about was the program we ran uh, later in the summer, which was our first test of collaborative activities. The opportunity to see if we can use Drix to talk to other vehicles, to monitor other vehicles, to keep track of other vehicles, to direct other vehicles. And in doing that, free up the big expensive mothership, Nautilus, to go off and do its own work. In the past, we've had to have Nautilus dedicated to working with an individual vehicle. So if Mezabot was gonna go over the side, Nautilus would have to sit and tend it. But now can we use a much less expensive platform to do that? And so we got a long way last year. We worked very closely with the Woods Hole Mezabot team and we established communication protocols so we can actually uh, track the vehicles and even give them some very uh, limited set of commands. So that's where we were last year. And what we've done this year is increase that capability a long way. Again, the Woods Hole team and the UNH team uh, working on communication strategies, opening up a much larger set of commands that they can send to uh, the Mezabot, opening up some better real-time visualization capabilities of providing situational awareness of where the, the vehicles are, adding uh, instruments like a, an AIS so that we can track uh, Mezabot when it comes to the surface and see it through, through the Drix. And so this this past spring, we had a major upgrade of Drix to put a sonar that allows it to map down to 3,000 meters. The other thing we the really big step forward was put a Starlink antenna on Drix. And so now we're not limited by the normal ranges that we were limited in last year, which were the radio systems that we had to communicate with the ship. That was at a maximum of about 20 kilometers. And today we were 37 kilometers away from the Nautilus. It's really quite fantastic. And we're just really just scratching the surface of where we can go. So as I said, last year, at the end of the Tech Challenge last year, we had three vehicles in the water, mapping the surface, the midwater, and the seafloor, all at the same time with Nautilus free to, to do its activity. And this year we've taken that, but we've now turned it into addressing some serious scientific questions in a chain called the Geologist Seamounts. And we're looking very, very closely, probably in ways that nobody has ever looked before, at the distribution of biodiversity around the seamount. And the reason we can do that is because we can use both the ship's midwater echo sounder and the Drix's midwater echo sounder, see the layering, the distribution of something. We don't know what that is when we see those targets in the water column, but now with that we can turn around and send Mezabot directly to those targets. And we've been going through a series of exercises of standard sampling protocol and our what we call verified directed sampling where we'll and I think we're gonna now be able to start learning from that, learning about the behavior of the animals with respect to the vehicle too, because we have to understand if there are biases being introduced by the motors, of the lights, and we're going through a series of experiments to do that. But I think we're really setting ourselves up for a future now of this kind of uh, verified directed sampling in many different environments. We're looking at biodiversity now. Next year, we'll probably go to an area with volcanism and hydrothermal vents and be able to look at that too and, and look at the distribution of things in the water column and be able to direct sampling towards it.
we're really, really happy with everything that's happening, and we're looking forward to even better stuff in the future. So that's it. Some updates from NA155 multi-vehicle exploration and an example of how we'll see these technologies applied in the future to answer important questions about the biodiversity of our shared oceans.